everybody. Welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. Coming at you from the East Coast to the United States in the New York area, between New York and Boston, along the southern New England coast. And boy, do we have a special guest joining us here live from the Los Angeles, California area. Our very special guest, Ryan Cassidy, is joining us, actor, author, and set designer as well, set decorator. And that's really exciting. We're going to talk about that. Actually, he's working on NCIS, which he has for many years on CBS. We're going to talk about something else really exciting. A new book. Now, you've probably seen this in some of our promotions. The book is, and the forward is by his mom, Shirley Jones, of course, the Academy Award winning actress. James Cackney was my babysitter. Now, we've got a real surprise because not only is Ryan joining us as well, but a friend of our show is returning. Johnny Ray Miller is back as well. Now, you may remember we also did a terrific episode and conversation with Johnny, and that was about his love affair with everything Partridge, of course, but he's a prolific writer and author, and he penned When We're Singing, and of course, he uh, co-authored the book, James Cagney Was My Babysitter, with Ryan Cassidy. So the two of them are going to be here on the show, and I want to tell you a little bit about the book itself. So to talk about the book, we're going to talk about a lot of other cool things as well. Now, I'm going to set the stage for you, gang. Imagine you're an eight-year-old introvert informed by your father that you will spend the afternoon at a famous actor's house, a famous actor you've never met. In fact, this famous actor from Hollywood's golden age will be your babysitter. From the spooky car ride up a narrow driveway in Benedict Canyon to the creaky opening of their front door that reveals an elderly James Cagney. Yes, the extraordinary, legendary James Cagney. Of course, you're captivated. The star of The Public Enemy, Yankee Doodle Dandy, White Heat, Mr. Roberts, and many other Hollywood classics is nothing like you'd expect. He's not brash, not a killer. He isn't loud, doesn't sing and dance. He's quiet and gentle, full of imagination. He's not a scary gangster like you would think. Kind of more like Santa Claus. And in one afternoon, away from the pressures of a perfectionist dad... You sort of relax and fall into the spell of a wonderful babysitter who makes you feel special and encourages you to enter imaginary worlds where leprechauns come to life and owls speak to you from the trees. Hours later, you leave James Cagney's house changed from a timid child into an enthusiastic young man who is totally infused with self-confidence and ready for life's next adventure. You know who that happened to? Our very special guest, Ryan Cassidy. Ryan, of course, is the youngest of the brothers uh, of talking, of course, about Sean Cassidy and uh, his half-brother, David Cassidy and Patrick Cassidy, all successful in their own right. And the son of the iconic Academy Award winning Shirley Jones, who everybody fell in love with, with everything that she's ever done. But of course, especially when she was Mrs. Partridge on the Partridge family, an iconic actress, extraordinaire. Yes, this is Ryan's fabulous mother. And in addition to all of this, of course, his dad is the iconic Jack Cassidy. Brilliant actor. Tony, nominated extraordinaire, winner, Grammy, everything. This guy, you know, truly a legend and uh, missed, of course, by all. And of course, there he is with the brothers. You can see Patrick and you can see Ryan and, of course, Sean, who was a mega pop star many, many, many years. A lot of um, people had the posters on their walls. David, of course, too, as well. And uh, just like his dad, Ryan, always very, very dapper. And we're going to talk about, we're going to take you back in time, what it's like, you know, growing up. Cassidy with two famous parents and uh, being famous yourself, but also having the opportunity to create and carve out, you know, your own life and enjoy. I'm going to tell you who these folks are and some of these great photos. You may remember Sean in this great shot here as well, or this is uh, Ryan, that is. They look similar, don't they? <laughs> That's the thing. They all have that similar Cassidy look which I think is incredible. There you can see, I would say you see a little bit of uh, Shirley's eyes there in Ryan's eyes in that particular shot. 
Of course, James Cagney himself, the iconic actor we are focusing on. And, uh, you know, we were just visiting our folks in Florida just recently and how ironic, and this was only around Mother's Day, well, was a couple of months ago. And what was on the television? A James Cagney movie. So how I'll propose that we're going to be talking about James Cagney with Ryan Cassidy and Johnny Ray Miller. If you would like to comment while the show is on live, gang, you can do that right now. Our Liberty Hall chat room is available when the show is on live. You can interact with our show. You guys know I'm a very interactive host, so we invite you to do that. Like, comment, subscribe, all the rest. But uh, without further ado, the guys are waiting in the wings. We are so excited again to talk about the book but also all the other cool things we have in store for you. First, let's welcome Johnny Ray Miller, who is here. You remember from a previous episode of our series, Johnny Ray, welcome back to the show, my friend. Hey, nice to see you, Jim. That's it. We can't get enough Cassidy, right? Oh, I'm with you. <laughs> More, absolutely. And of course, Ryan Cassidy is joining us as well from his home in the Los Angeles area. Ryan, an honor and a pleasure to welcome you to the Jim Master Show as well, my friend. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Very, very happy. The pleasure is all mine. So how's the weather there? We're on the East Coast. It's a little 75 degrees, coastal breeze. We're doing all right here. How about you in the LA area? Oh, it's really cold outside. I mean, you need a jacket. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's hot. H O T hot. Yeah. Ca California's idea yeah. of cold is a little uh, exactly. <laughs> Beach yeah. uh, in a swimming pool or in an air conditioning house. So. That's it, I tell you. <laughs> well, you're all comfy in your air conditioners, uh, air conditioned homes. So really cool to have you guys here. And again, Johnny Ray, thanks for stopping by again. And Oh, thank I, you for I, having me back. Oh, yeah. Congratulations on co-authoring this fabulous book. And Ryan, you as well. Congratulations on, is this, would this be your first book? This indeed is my first book. Wow. Congratulations on that. What was that process like coming up initially with the idea of the book and actually sharing such a warm hearted, intimate and loving story of, in this case, James Cackney. And you're giving us an opportunity to see James Cackney in a different light than the way presented, of course, in Hollywood movies and so much more. You know, this was an idea that I had 25, 30 years ago, um, I the drawing, which is part of the story, uh, has been with me since I was a child. And uh, I would look at this drawing and, you know, reminisce about that afternoon that I spent with him. And I, I had wanted to write a, a short story about it for a, either a children's magazine, uh, but I, I, I had wanted to I really wanted to share it with everybody. And I, 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 people would ask me through the years, you know, uh, who's the most interesting person that I've met, actor or whomever. And uh, I, I always went back to that afternoon when I spent, uh, you know, when I spent the day with, with James Cagney. Um, I, so this was an idea that really kind of morphed into what it became. Um, and I, I didn't know how it was going to be told. I just knew that I had to tell it. And I had to tell it authentically uh, through the lens of a little boy um, and bring the intimacy of that afternoon uh, and, and share it with everybody in some way. Mm. Uh, you know, James Cagney was, uh, was really the antithesis of a lot of the characters that he portrayed in movies. And um, I knew who he was, but I didn't know the magnitude of the work that he had really left behind. Because as a little boy, you just, you know, you don't, I didn't really watch his movies. I had seen some of his um, bits, tidbits from different films. I knew that he was a tap dancer. I loved tap dancing as a child. And I knew that he did a movie with my mother. Um, and I remember talking to my mom through the years about the relationship that she had with him, the relationship that my father had with him. And we would share that afternoon when my father picked me up and took me to his house. And she often commented on, on how much 
uh, Jim enjoyed that afternoon and shared it with her later. Mm -hmm. And um, it really warmed my heart as a little boy hearing that. So it never left my memory bank. And it, 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 when I would stare at the drawing, it would bring happiness to me and it would take me right back to that afternoon. So uh, to go back to the question, when people would say to me, who left the strongest impression on you? Uh, who, um, who did you view as being bigger than life? Uh, it was it was it was James Cadney, and when I met Johnny, uh, Johnny had already, of course, uh, written the book about the Partridge family. We developed a friendship, and I mentioned to him, I said, you know, John, I've had this idea about writing a book for a long time about my afternoon spent with James Cadney, and I'd like to discuss that with you because you might you might have some ideas, and it just went from there. And, it snowballed into this lovely story, this book. That's so incredible. And and Johnny, you know, having had this uh, incredible appreciation for the Partridge family and that iconic series we all grew up with and people still have an affinity for, and of course the Cassidy family, um, what was it like to combine the energies with Ryan and actually put something together as beautiful as this story is? Because again, you know, Ryan is opening up about his life and he's sharing a very special time with an iconic Hollywood legend and sharing it with all the world and also giving us a, an opportunity to sort of pause in our own lives to see who are the James Cagneys that we have around us in our lifetime. What was it like putting it together with Ryan? And again, welcome back to the show, Johnny. Thank you, Jim. Uh, you know, it's, it's a case of uh, the dream doesn't just come true. The dream keeps on going. Uh, it, it really is unbelievable to me um, as a guy who, <laughs> I, I love to say this, lives in the middle of nowhere, Ohio. You know, <laughs> it just keeps on going. And um, very, you know, I describe it as something beyond um, explainable, really. Um, it, it, it's just kind of like when you're in the groove of life and it's going. And whatever that force is that just is behind you on all of it, it just keeps on going, you know. So you know, as James Cagney was his babysitter, Keith Partridge was mine, <laughs> you know? So, you know, <laughs> you've got this sort of um, parallel thing, kind of, sort of, um, where you're seeing these people in one way until you know them and have this experience with them. And then they become human beings that um, are, are, is a greater experience than, even the character or the imagination or whatever. Uh, and that's kind of, you know, that's sort of the parallel for me. And so with Ryan, it's, you know, you add to it the amazing thing that we just kind of had this chemistry thing going on as far as, you know, storytelling goes. I, I remember the first day he started telling me about the story and um, I could see it in five minutes. I could see it in, less time than that just um uh his voice is clear and it's pure and gentle and um full of imagination and full of uh um oh how do i describe it very in the moment um and his story was so alive so he you know he, he had been thinking about this for many, many years, and I did not know that. Mm. And um, one day I was doing some research on, of course, David, and I'm looking back at old articles from 25 years ago, and I found this article, um, and in it was a live you know, a comment, you know, a quote, that Ryan, his youngest brother, was thinking about writing a book. Now, this is 25 years ago, called James Cagney Was My Babysitter. Wow. So it was just kind of wild to, you know, come in and be part of that groove. And um, I mean, I think of him as one of my greatest friends at this point. Wow. And how amazing you talked about who babysat you. Our cousin 
Pat, she babysat us and we <laughs> had Pop Goes the Weasel going on in the record uh, player and also the Partridge Family albums playing while we danced <laughs> in the living room. So this is sort of like a full circle situation right. going on yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe even the Candyman from Sammy Davis Jr. was on too, I think. The candy well, you know, man. now we need we need the Yankee Doodle Dandy playing. You got to have the Yankee right? Doodle Dandy. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Going going back, we'll circle back to the book too. And I'd love for you when you can show the back of the book because it has that image that we're talking about on it. But if I let's uh, let's do a close up. There it is. Tell us about that, Ryan. Well, this this image, which is uh, a a lepre a dancing gnome, a leprechaun, if you will, uh, is my interpretation of. Um, of James Cagney. James Cagney was an artist. Um, his his passion was uh, painting, um, and I that afternoon, uh, one of the beautiful moments that I had with him was that he took out a pen and a and a pad and um, had uh, expressed interest in. He first asked me if I liked art, and I said I I did. Um, but I didn't know, you know, I, I liked drawing, I liked art, but I didn't really know where this was going. And he said, well, uh, I like to draw and, um, I'm going to draw, uh, some illustrations for you. Um, what would you like me to draw for you? And I said, I was enamored with mm. this, uh, diorama, if you will, that was, uh, sort of in inside his wall it was it was like a cavity in the wall that had these little um uh sort of uh stuffed uh characters like uh, puppets if, you know if you will that were in a, a scenic setting and he had two of them and uh i was drawn to them immediately when i was looking around in his house um one of the settings was turned out to be Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and I found that out later on. It was it was created well. The 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 diorama was made by uh, a, a man that he worked with in the film business, and there were these wonderful images uh, and these um, handmade uh, puppets of. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and the other one was called Pirate's Cove. Um, one of the Seven Dwarfs was, I thought at the time was Rumpelstiltskin. I didn't know what it was, and I was fascinated by it. It was so detailed. And he said, what are you, what, what is it about it that you like? And I said, I, I love models. I love the unknown. I love imagination. And he said, well, why don't I draw something for you? And he ended up drawing what turned out to be, uh, I think, a character that he played in a movie in um, Midsummer's Night Dream. But it was really uh, a dancing gnome or dancing, you know, leprechaun. Leprechaun, and yeah. That's what, that's what that is. And that's part of the story. And yeah. When he handed it to me, I, well, first of all, I watched him draw and it was these, just these sticks going together. I thought, where's this going? And, and then I saw it take form and it was fascinating. I loved it. And that's incredible. It, it just, it, uh, I saw the imagination that he had and, um, he, he, wanted me to, he wanted to engage with me and see where, where my thought process was. And uh, he, there, that was a very special connection that I had with him. And um, I, I never forgot it. And mm -hmm. I kept with me my whole life, that drawing. Did you at that point have an idea of the activity? iconic nature of who he was or was he just Jim, yeah. Jimmy James? I mean, I, I knew that he was uh, um, 
a, an established actor. I knew that he had his body of work was incredible, but I didn't really know that I didn't know it until later. And that's yeah. what was so um, kind of uh, fascinating as as I got older and I did see his movies. I, I realized, wait a minute, that's the man that I spent the afternoon with, and I still I still was drawn to the fact that he was so warm hearted. He was so humble. He was so genuine. And when I would watch his characters, I was like, that, that's not the man that I remember. Even though his performances were always amazing. And, um, but I, I, I still was trying to connect. I was like, wait a minute, that's, that's the guy that I spent the afternoon with. It was, <laughs> it was amazing to me. And um, I think that's part of what built on the fascination of wanting to share that this afternoon with everybody, you know, in in, in a story, and um, his whole house was uh, fascinating and yeah. warm and inviting. And uh, I recently went back to see it, and it, it it was beautiful. That's so incredible! What what a fabulous story! And again, so much more is in the actual book. I want to. Uh, Rewind just a little bit. One of your, of course, growing up in an iconic family with uh, beloved people like your mom, Shirley Jones, and Jack Cassidy, of course, um, for you, one of the first opportunities was actually being in the music video for Lionel Richie's Penny Lover, right? Tell us about that. Great song, too. Well, uh, so w when I graduated high school, I, am, I embarked on a wanting to perform. I got an agent, I got a manager. I started auditioning. Um, of course I got, you know, headshots taken. I was, I was, uh, being sent out on auditions and I, uh, I got a call one day from my manager saying, you know, Ryan, we have an opportunity for you to audition personally for Lionel Richie. Um, the song Penny Lover had, well, he of course had a list of, he was, you know, a huge sensation in in the 80s and uh he was well known and uh the notion that i was going to go in and audition for lionel richie was pretty a big deal it was like well what is it well it's a it's a music video uh for the song penny lover and i thought well what am i auditioning for and and uh, my manager said well it's for the role of a sailor right and the storyline was that uh lionel richie and i uh meet in this bar in shanghai and we end up uh in sort of a dispute over the same woman that was in this particular bar nightclub which was penny so i went into the audition uh i met lionel richie and uh he said okay he said, I want you to uh, look at the camera. And he said, I want you to give me a kind of a, uh, uh, an angry look. And he said, I want you to um, feel uh, jealousy. And I said, okay, let me see if I can access that emotion. And I, I did. And uh, I did it a couple of times for him. And he said, great. He said, fantastic. Thanks for coming in. And I left. And uh, the next day I got a phone call that I was hired to be in the video and to be the, the, the sailor, uh, the leading actor in the storyline. Um, man named Bob Giraldi directed it, who was a mm -hmm. well, uh, uh, music video director. And uh, he, uh, they, they put a lot of money into making this this music video. And um, I had the best day when I went there that day and I, and I worked on it. And Lionel Richie was fantastic, uh, very nice man. Um, and I would run into him periodically afterwards. Well, the music video came out and did very well. And um, uh, that was sort of the beginning. Um, that then okay. comes along the facts of life on NBC, that iconic series as well. 
Tell us about that and how that opportunity came your way. You know, I, I had developed a friendship with Mindy Cohen. I knew Mindy. Yes. I uh, was on Facts of Life. And the role came up for a character that, by the name of Kevin Metcalf, mm -hmm. that lived in the attic of Edna's Edibles. The role was a recurring role, which means that I was on it, not, I wasn't on every episode, but I was on it, you know, um, periodically. Well, uh, I auditioned for it. Uh, then I auditioned for the network and um, uh, I, I got the job and uh, I, I was very nervous to say the least. It was, I was 18 years old. I never worked on a television series. The show had already been on for several seasons and been a big hit. Um, we, we shot it at Universal and, uh, it was fantastic. I enjoyed every minute of it. Um, I developed a relationship with all the girls. Uh, my character, uh, slowly sort of developed relationships with, um, a couple of different people, but it never really took off. And, um, I, a couple of the, the episodes revolved around my character directly. Um, there was one episode where I, where I actually moved up into the attic. My father was dating Mrs. Garrett in the storyline, and that's how I was introduced. Um, so I was on it for uh, a, a, almost a full season. I did, mm -hmm. um, as I said, most of the, the episodes I did revolved around my character. Working with the iconic Charlotte Ray, of course, that must have been incredible, and, and the rest of the cast. Yeah, no, it it was um, it was a great experience for me. I I really I learned a lot. Uh, ironically, I work now. I've worked on a lot of sitcoms since then, and mm -hmm. so I I had to under you know I had a I certainly understood how sitcoms were made. I saw the the process and how they were made, where you go in. You have a table read, you then start to block and rehearse, and then you shoot the show in front of a live audience. And, um, you know, I, I was very, I was, I learned a lot and I, and I loved the process and it was like working in the theater and that you were in front of a live audience, mm -hmm. was, you know, it was fantastic. Um, you know, it's it's interesting to go back and watch those episodes now, um, and I show them to my daughter, and she's like, "Dad, that's I can't believe it. Look how young you are!" Yeah, yeah, I was a kid, you know. Yes, yeah, I tell you, it, it goes quite fast, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> In a New York minute, as we like to say. <laughs> that's right. And of course, you know the the DNA and the genes to entertain and performance uh, oriented, making people smile and and feel good with your phenomenal parents, Shirley Jones and, and Jack Cassidy, um, two iconic figures in Hollywood and entertainment, and beloved in and millions of lives still today. Um, there you are. What a cutie picture with mom. <laughs> Um, tell, I was tell, uh, about that's, eight months in that photo. Oh my God! I tell you, <laughs> yeah. Who didn't have a crush on Shirley Jones? I tell you, especially when she was Mrs. Partridge. Oh boy, yeah. It was. Uh, I think the trifecta was Shirley Jones, Barbara Eden, Elizabeth Montgomery. Pretty much all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah. I so. I spent yeah. a lot of time with my mother on the set of the Partridge family. You but did, I'm... yeah. Mm -hmm. And what was that like? You know, here's this, uh, you know, iconic series, of course. It's happening on ABC Friday nights following the Brady Bunch and what, I think before the Nanny of the Professor or after and Room 222 and that yeah. whole lineup and that incredible schedule. Um, the exposure to seeing, you know, mom on a regular series. And of course, 
uh, you know, brother David as well, and the rise happening there for him too. It was pretty overwhelming, but it was also wonderful. I mean, in that I, I love the attention that my brother got. I love the attention that my mother got. You know, my mother was always a grounded person, though, and uh, I think that the the stability that she brought to our home, in that you know she. she she always believed that your job was your job and your family comes first. Um, she, she, as much as we were exposed to having parents that were well known, uh, she kept it really simple. And she believed in getting an education. She believed that you go out and you work and um, that she actually kind of wanted us to, you know, she didn't really want us to be in show business because she saw the ups and downs that show business brought to the table. Um, she really supported us going to college, getting an education and, and getting into a job that brought stability. Um, I do remember her talking about working in production and working um, in, a, in a part of production that could bring you more stability than being an actor. Um, as you know, we're in the middle of a strike right now and um, that will get resolved. But, you know, I'm fortunate in that I, I developed a craft working in, in the set decorating department on TV and film that has really given me uh, as much stability as you can get in this business. Um, it's, it's, uh, I had always had a love and a, and, a, and a sort of a drive or passion for architecture, for decorating, and I and I think that um, as that as that as I got older and that um, flourished in its own way, um, I I finally I, I put it to work and uh, professionally. Uh, I the joke that I tell is that when I would get an audition for, as an actor, instead of coming home and learning my lines. I would come home and rearrange my house and uh, <laughs> and then I'd realize, wait a minute, I have to, I have to look at these sides and I have to go in and I have to, and anyway, it was the bottom line is that I was always drawn to uh, aesthetics and mm -hmm. visual uh, appearance uh, to create warmth. And I just, I grew up around that. My father was very talented that way and we grew up in a beautiful home it wasn't um it it, it was a warm home but it was it always uh just was inviting and uh that rubbed off on me you know uh i would say yeah because we all have elements of uh each of our parents and in, in all of us and of course your father known for being a brilliant actor and, and performer and, and singer and entertainer and impeccably dressed and very creative, very artistic and on so many different levels um, and a real influence, even though, you know, he was gone when you were a kid, still uh, there's so many elements of him within yourself that you see rising and coming out, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, he he left a very strong impression on on everything we met. Um, I remember, uh, you know, seeing him work on the on the stage. I remember uh, going to Universal Studios and watching him uh, shoot some of the Columbo episodes that he was in. Yes, um, I certainly remember his wardrobe. Uh, yes. I remember he had a different outfit for every occasion. And uh, I, I was all hammered by that. It's like, you know, how does somebody have a special outfit for when they go and get their car washed? And right. he, he, you know, he had a, um, he was a throwback to another era then. Yeah. In how he uh, presented himself uh, in how he dressed and, uh, um, and his... sort of missing a little of that, right? It was kind of cool that uh, sort of 
way of of taking the time to do th certain things in terms yeah. of presentation and and obviously with the artistic side of you uh you saw some of that from probably both parents but especially with your father and his his way of of presenting and taking the time to to do it um which is an art unto itself isn't it absolutely an art unto itself he uh he you know he, i mean he had incredible penmanship he um he saw talent in people and um he just had an eye for uh creating um magic from the standpoint of uh his imagination and um everything he did um i i believe that that there was some of that was left with my brothers and i a lot of it was actually and um i remember my father telling me when i was a little boy uh that uh that he saw a creative side in me when i was little and he wanted me to 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 um really find more of that and apply it in in whatever i was doing i mean i i, I remember um seeing my father uh uh his his architecture his vision for architecture i remember his when he was living in his condo i remember seeing his condominium and you'd walk into it and it was like walking into a museum and it was just the most beautiful place and i i just i i that rubbed off on me that really um you know my, my daughter uh, who's 12 years old um i think understands it now more than ever she sees how i am with uh wanting to create uh a vision with say a, taking a wall and what we can do with it and this you know the color and she just loves she loves that and uh i'm really proud that i was given the uh the 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 gift if you will the, of being able to to make that work for me on a professional level is that megan megan yeah yes now is she that's uh, the, yeah, that picture i worked on the show casey undercover and, that's right yeah that's yeah. a cool that's cool yeah these are cool shots there's megan there's megan when she was uh, a look at that huh that's cool you know there i i, I mentioned that you know obviously there are it's within the family because you know patrick of course a prolific and brilliant uh, actor and of course sean you know everybody uh, had the posters of sean and a, a fantastic entertainer and singer and performer and actor and a prolific uh producer as well right absolutely yeah yeah and then of course david too and his uh iconic career um really amazing uh, what what was the relationship like what is the relationship like with all of you in the same industry um was there any competition or were you supporting each other rooting for each other as well ryan we i was always rooting for them it, it, you know i i didn't feel competitive at all with them um i'm not saying that there hasn't been competition among my brothers but um i i think because i wasn't working in front of the camera I wasn't yeah. working theater. Um, I I didn't. They didn't feel the need to be competitive with me. Um, we've all worked together, uh, had an amazing time working together. Uh, my brother Sean uh, developed a show called Ruby and the Rockets that we all worked on. That's right. And uh, you know, when when as siblings working in the same profession, if you can all come together and work in an environment where you're all working together doing what you do and and be harmonious it says a lot about um the characters of who we are uh how we were raised um we lost our father when we were all very young and um we've all been through our you know our challenges if you will 
that everybody has had to experience, I'm sure on their own, in their own personal way. And we came through it on the other side. And there's always been incredible love and support in our family. Uh, through thick and thin, we're there for each other. And um, I'm really lucky to, to, to be able to say that uh, authentically. And that's, that's really where it's at. Um, you know, How is your mom? You have such a, a wonderful bond with your, you know, beautiful inside and out mom. How is your, your mom? Is she 89 now? She's 89. That is so hard to believe. My yeah. mom is really good. She's really, you know, she worked in this business um, from 1955 until about five years, six years ago, I guess, on a professional. I mean, she's still participates in things here and there, but she really, when, when my, my stepfather passed away, Marty Ingalls, um, we yes. came in and, and helped her uh, with the, the, the decision of, okay, is it, you know, do I continue to work uh, or, or do I retire? And um, she decided it was time. And we, we helped her with that in, in that we supported uh, her still being out there, but not having to work because she felt that, you know, she had to support and be the breadwinner. Um, and um, she's in, she's in great shape. She uh, is happy. She calls me four or five times a day or I oh, call. That's wonderful. But call me and say, I'm just calling because I want to hear your voice. And um, I bet you she called you probably an hour ago and said, I cannot believe you're on the Jim Masters show live. Called me while I was on this show. She while said, she was. <laughs> no, uh, she's a big, she's a big support with, with everything. And uh, I'm very, we're all very lucky. You know, too, um, a very grounded person growing up in, in Pennsylvania, right? So still has those sort of home and hearth sensibilities that, you know, you're in Hollywood, there's all the action, lights, camera, all this stuff going on, but still always remained um, with these yeah. sensibilities of family and love, which is a beautiful thing. You know, she was uh, fiercely independent her whole life and uh, only child. Um, she, she was able to separate uh, reality from fantasy in that she, again, her, her, her business, her profession uh, was her profession. And she, she was... Uh, she, she was very loved by her parents. Her father adored her and um, was at every opening of all of her performance, all of her shows. She just, she, she really instilled uh, values that were basic values within my brothers and I of, of having character, of, of having, um, of being a, a man of your word, uh, uh, treating people uh, uh, the way that you want to be treated uh, and and following through and being committed to what you're doing professionally and and uh, not letting people down or you're letting yourself down. Um, she is still that way and uh, it, it's it's one of the character traits that I respect in her, and I believe that my brothers and I have a lot of that as well. You know, my father was uh, very different. Uh, my father was an incredible human being, um, incredibly talented, as I was, we were just talking about. But my father lived in more of the fantasy world of, um, I'm an actor, and uh, uh, this is what I do. And I believe he based a lot of his identity on that rather than, uh, reality of he has children and you know um, uh, he has to be there for his kids as much as my father knew how to be there he was there but uh, he was an escape artist and uh, a lot of actors are, are good at that and it's one of the reasons why they're actors um, so we got both sides of the spectrum from parenting um, and I think that uh, 
the balance of it, uh, I'm able to look at now objectively. Uh, and, and I believe that it, it's, uh, again, I'm very fortunate in, in the, the, uh, the ability to, to be, uh, uh, to look at it objectively from, from the standpoint of, I now am a parent and, uh, what can I do with my daughter to improve, uh, um, the things that I believe that I didn't maybe get from, from my father, but, um, uh, give her also the, the things that were given to me from him and, and the things that are positive. So, you know, it's, uh, we are a product of how we were raised. And, um, I, I believe that, uh, you have the ability to change the course on, on the choices you make, um, to improve things that maybe were not strong growing up. And uh, I'm very fortunate that I can can do that uh, with my daughter, and as a general note. So, um, do you feel it, your um, impeccable tastes? Because I know you you enjoy cars, but you also enjoy clothing, and uh, I might be guilty of that as well. Nobody say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think that, I mean, both your parents impeccably always dressed and always look phenomenal, but uh, do you think some of that did come down from dad, the, the appreciation for nice clothing and, and looking nice? Uh, and, yeah. I mean, yeah. I have a few of my dad's suits, actually. It's still you alive. do, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, it, there's no question in my mind yeah. that, that his uh, passion for appearance and uh detail uh, uh was was left with me so a lot of that was given to me and to my brothers and um, he uh, came he, irish catholic from new york right that is correct yeah and he's, uh yeah he's the only he had he had uh, 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 uh two older brothers uh um and uh, and an older sister I, and, and and he's the only one that became it that worked uh, as a guy in, in the industry um, with that personality and the charisma. I mean, he, he could, you know, you, you could buy a car, a used car from him any day. He just had this charisma and this believability and this wonderful way about him, um, as your mother does too. But with that, again, home and hearth and that stability and the warmth, wonderful balance, right? When you really look at the yin and yang of, of it all. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Um, my, my dad was from a blue collar working family. His father was a railroad engineer and my mother's father, uh, owned a, a, a beer brewery. He was in the beer business. Right. So that they both came from, you know, these, sort of uh, uh, backgrounds that that at that time they were able to live comfortably, especially during the depression era, because yes. both their parents had fairly good incomes. Um, right. And uh, there's many generations of railroad engineers on my father's side of the family. Um, and the, the, brewer, the beer brewery is still called Jones Brewing Company, although- That's uh, right, yeah. She's no longer. Uh, she's no longer in that world. I mean, but uh, they still produce beer. Yeah, I can relate, and it was uncanny when I was really digging deep uh, for this conversation on our show, Ryan, because I'm like my God, there's a lot of similarities in terms of just the the types of people and the exposure. Because I too. Uh, an Irish Catholic New York father, well-dressed and hair always in place, <laughs> almost looks like he could be related to Jack Cassidy. <laughs> wow. Coming, there we are there. Coming, you see the sad Irish Catholic New York thing. And uh, mom and dad, you know, dad, charisma, humor, funny, impeccably dressed. Mom, home and hearth, New England, you know, salt of the earth type of thing. So I understand uh, there's a relatability to having two people in that vein. 
I tell you, they do look like they could be cousins a little bit, your father and my, <laughs> that Irish Catholic thing. What do you think, Johnny? You see similarity, similarity oh, there? Oh, yeah, I, I, I like think so. Irish think Catholic so. New York thing, huh? That's right, yeah. yeah. I got the Irish thing. I, I can relate there. You there can relate. Our family. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, <laughs> so I was mentioning too. So Sean is really a, a prolific producer too, right? Some people might not realize that if they only know him from, you know, the Hardy Boys and all the other past incredible things he's done. Tell us about how Sean's doing. Sean's doing great. I yeah. mean, not working because there's a, because of the strike, but he yeah. he created his own one man sh show where he goes out and. Uh, tells intimate stories about our family and sings wonderful songs. And uh, Sean is always reinventing himself in some way. And he does it beautifully. Um, he has a big family and his children are all healthy and growing up. He's, you know, and uh, going off to college. Um, he's, uh, he's been very successful post mm -hmm the teen years, you know, if you will. And, uh, but has learned to, uh, he, he came to the realization that he needs to give back uh, to all the fans that uh, want to know what he's doing. So he created his own show and he takes it on the road and uh, it's done very, very well. And so. of course, you know, uh, losing David was just you know, unimaginable as well. Um, Tell us about uh, David and, you know, obviously beloved and still missed today. Boy, I remember when he was on The Apprentice, too. That was really an interesting, an interesting broadcast. Um, he really it's extraordinary the the love people have had for David over the years and still today. David had a huge impact on millions and millions of people. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe that, uh, you know, he, he, everything he did, he did from his heart and yeah. uh, he tried towards the end to uh, get back, go out there and he wanted to still perform and yeah. he did it. And, uh, you know, for a man that was this pop star sensation back in the seventies, he really continue to reinvent himself as well between from the Partridge family days to Las Vegas to um, continue on. He did that really, really well. And, you know, he, he um, his music uh, affected a lot of people on a, on a positive note. And um, I, I, you know, I love hearing stories about him and, uh, when I speak about David, I speak um, from with nothing but loving thoughts because my relationship with him was really strong. And, um, you know, through all the battles that he had to endure, um, we were both very supportive of each other. And, and I loved him unconditionally. And, uh, and it worked both ways, you know. Um, yeah. We worked together on Ruby and the Rockets. Uh, right. We were um, very close and spending a lot of time together. And um, I, I believe that uh, he wanted to, um, he knew that he, that he had had an impact on all these people and he wanted to keep trying to give back. Um, and I miss him a lot, you know. Yeah. I think about him often. Uh, he has two children. I yeah. talk to him often. And um, I do miss him a lot. You know, he's, uh, he really uh, touched a lot of people's hearts. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and a unique sound to his voice, too. You can hear it. It was d distinctive. There's nobody yeah. else that sounds like his voice. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. He Absolutely. had a picture of how his, what his style was. His, the sound in, in, in how he sang. Yeah. And I remember going to Las Vegas and seeing him perform and it was, it was really amazing. Real entertainer. Yeah. Oh, and he loved performing. He loved uh, being on the stage. Yeah. And, uh, 
He was incredibly funny. Had yes. A yeah. Wonderful sense of humor. And one of the topics that she, that he and I shared was our father and uh, the incredible gifts that came out of uh, being his children and things that my father left behind. Um, and uh, we, we had a lot of similar interests. We both loved vintage cars. We both loved architecture. We both loved um, a lot of, a lot of things that, that, that we would sit outside in my backyard and talk about so many things. And, uh, you know, I'm very, I'm very fortunate that I had the times, the moments with him that I did have before he passed away. Absolutely. Beautifully said uh, on so many levels, Ryan. Um, your brother, of course, uh, Patrick, as I mentioned, uh, is doing his thing and doing it quite well as well. And and that's great, too, right? Tell us how Patrick's doing. Of course, I know. Patrick doing great. Patrick brought his gift uh, to the theater uh, world. Yeah. In, in Nashville or outside of Nashville in, in Tennessee. And uh, he works, runs a, a, a nonprofit there uh, and oversees artistically everything for the theater company. Um, he's uh, left an incredible body of work behind and still, and still creates it uh, not only as a performer, but as an incredible singer, uh, director now, and, and producer. And, uh, Patrick has uh, found his niche uh, in in working with other actors and and uh, you know creating um, the environment for them in the theater and uh, he's really great he's doing great he uh, loves Tennessee uh, he's got two beautiful sons he's been happily married for a long long time. And uh, he's doing he's he's doing great. He's going to be out here next week, actually. See him. That's fantastic. You have this really fantastic. It looks like a painting behind you on the wall. What is that? Out of the way here. That's a painting of me. That was painted by my longest and dearest friend, a man by the name of Alexander Mihailovich. And uh, it's. Uh, it's a giant painting, something I normally wouldn't have looked to get on my own accord. He was living in my guest house and he uh, turned my guest house into a studio, art studio. And he came over one day and said, I'm going to start doing portraits of people. And I want you to be my first, um, my first person I paint. So that is so cool. <laughs> Beautiful job too, huh? What an artist. Yeah. He's an amazing artist. He, uh, he's a sculptor, he's a uh, designer, he's a builder, he's a really talented guy. We mentioned, uh, of course, you are a uh, set decorator, set dresser as well, and working with NCIS. Um, how did that start for you? What was the entree into doing that? Because you've worked on a lot of incredible series and, and specials and more, Ryan. I worked uh, for Jim Henson Productions uh, when I was uh, still pursuing being an actor, uh, working in their office. And uh, this was a long, long time ago, over 20, 25 years ago now. Uh, and I had, uh, they had asked me to help uh, sort of uh, reconfigure some of their offices and um, help decorate them if you will. Well, while I was working for Jim Henson Productions, they had uh, started, they, they created a show called Muppets Tonight, which they were, were developing and uh, they put together, and this was at Raleigh Studios. And I had had already, the, the, the seed was planted as far as me working with, in the business, behind the camera, working in the set decorating department. And I went to the producer of this show, Muppets Tonight, and I asked him if I could have the opportunity to work, to work on the show in the set decorating department. And he said, yes, the opportunity is there, but you would have to leave working for the company. And I said, I'll take that risk and I'll do it. And I left working for the company 
as an employee, and I was hired as a set dresser trainee on the show Muppets Tonight. And I was very fortunate to work with all the puppeteers from Jim Henson Productions um, and um, absolutely loved it. And that was my first job really in the film business uh, behind the camera working uh, in set dressing and set decorating. And of course, all those sets were elevated because the puppeteers had to walk through them. So all of the set dressing was, was on platforms, which was uh, very specialized from the standpoint of being a set decorator or dresser. Uh, you, the sets were scaled down for the, for the puppets. From that job, I was hired on another show and then I got into the union, Local 44, which is part of the IA, IATC, and started working from that point on on so many different things. And I was very fortunate uh, in that I, I didn't stop working. And um, I have been on tons of television shows, films. I was lucky enough to work on the, on the TV show ER. Uh, the, I worked on the movie The Lincoln Lawyer. I worked in a movie called Blow uh, with Johnny Depp. Um, I mean, there's a whole list of films that I've worked on. And um, I was, I loved it. I loved the camaraderie that, that, I, that you developed on, on a set with people. Uh, I was sort of the on-set dresser job, which is what I, what I do on NCIS, um, was something that kind of found me. Uh, I knew that I loved detail and I knew that I loved working around people, but to be with the crew, because uh, you're either decorating the set and you walk away and then the crew takes over, or you're actually with the crew and the camera department and the actors on the set while the cameras are rolling. And that's the, sh the basically the job that I, that, that I, and now I am involved with that I do. So those, for those that are watching and, and wondering with, that capacity of being a set dresser for you know this iconic series and CIS. Uh, do you have any input in the final say on what's the thing going to look like, or you're following patterns and designs that others have created? Well, there's a production designer who creates it. It's like a when you're working in construction, if you will, and you're at a job, there's a, a, a production designer that gives you a blueprint of what the set is going to be. They then have a construction department that comes in and frames out the set. And then you have basically an empty, you have a, a set, whether it be a living room set, a doctor's office, a police station. Uh, once the set is completed, uh, the uh, art, the set designer comes in and decides where uh, the colors that are going to be used, the color of the carpet, the color, and then the decorator comes in and, and picks out all of the objects that are going to be in that set. My job on behalf of the set decorating department as the onset dresser is to come in once the set is completed right. and been decorated is to keep the integrity of that set on behalf of the set decorating department uh, complete and also to make sure the continuity is is correct while the cameras are rolling so on a show when they're shooting a, a single camera show uh, a camera goes in shoots a scene and they do coverage then you turn around and then you have to shoot in, into a different direction and you have to move all the furniture out but you have to make sure when you when they turn around again that it goes back to exactly where it was so the job for the onset dresser is to make sure continuity is set the other aspect of my job is that at the last minute they may say well we don't want this table do you have another table we need this type of a table or we need this type of a chair so i have to get creative about that and go find the right chair and in the, in the case of NCIS, we have uh, an overflow of set dressing, decorating, uh, furniture, lighting that we can pull from if we need to change something. And on 
in many cases, I will have to change something and go get that, that uh, lamp, that piece of art and change it out. And that's part of the job also. It's incredible. And, and also making sure that in the frame, meaning that when there's a frame of the set, that everything that has been established by the set decorator is there and not moved and mm -hmm. taken because the director says, I don't like that. In other words, that should all be set before they start shooting. And the continuity too, right? Yeah. So you can pick it up where it was left off. Sometimes you can see shows where like, gee, in the last scene, that cup was there. Now the cup isn't. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's those I little mean, things. Yeah. When, when, the, when it goes to editing, there's a lot of things that they can change in editing and yeah. fix. But the idea is that you don't want, because that ends up costing money. Yeah. You want to make sure that it's right uh, from the get-go so they don't have to do that. You must have had a ball decorating your beautiful home <laughs> and dressing <I> it. <laughs> I had a great time decorating it, and that's what I, I'm still redecorating it. You know, it's like I've my home is almost like a set. I'll create the environment that I'm doing or that I'm that I want for that time frame and then I'll change it. And uh that's part of what I do. I mean it's what I do professionally and I love doing it as a hobby. So that's incredible. The uh the book again, just this opportunity to have had you know uh the experience with with james cagney what are some things about james cagney that um you learned about that that surprised you uh, again i mentioned you know he, he of course is so well known for all of the gangster roles but you describe him as, as quiet and almost humble and and there's a warmth and and you got a chance to experience that and then share it of course with us in this incredible children's book that really people are saying is great for adults as well. It's beautifully done, beautifully illustrated as well. Um, but what are a few things that uh, would surprise people about James Cagney? I think his, um, I think his, ability to make you feel like you're the most important person in the room and it's not about him. He didn't make it about him that afternoon. He made it about me and uh, if I was okay. Uh, he didn't really want to talk about himself. He wanted to he wanted to find out my interests. He wanted to he wanted to help me uh, find more of the artistic side in myself uh, that I believe that he had. Um, and uh, I think what surprised me was the fact that he was able to relate to a seven-year-old boy and that, that we had something that was, uh, we had kindred spirits, if you will, that you would, I, I was a stranger to him. I mean, yeah, he knows me. He did a movie with my mother and he knew my dad. But I was almost scared to be out of the environment of my home in somebody else's house that I didn't know. Mm. And, I, when I, and when I left that afternoon, I didn't want to leave, of course. I had such a great time with him. Um, uh, I think uh, he, he wanted to make me feel important and that I had something to bring to the table in life. Was uh, he somebody that uh, through the years, because of that experience, did he take on um, an uncle sort of role, a mentor role? Was there continued uh, communication as the years had gone on? Not really, uh, but he did stay in touch with my mother and he did ask about me. And he mentioned, he, he, they had a conversation right after my father passed away. Yeah. And he uh, shared his feelings about me to my mom that she, of course, shared with me later which was that I had insight and uh, that I was very creative. And, um, you know, he had said to my mother, you know, I, I would, I would love it. I would love it if he was my grandson, you know, I, 
I enjoyed spending the afternoon with him. And uh, I saw the creative energy that he had. And, and he, he also knew my parents were going through a separation at that time. And I think he wanted to make sure that I was okay. And that was really important to me. I think he wanted to, to uh, make me feel, I think he wanted to, to create safety for me. And I felt that. That's incredible. That really is. It's, it's so and beautiful to hear this. I never, I never forgot that, you know, no, right. I think why it was real. I was so driven to share that those beautiful moments in the book. Yeah. You know? Yes. Um, safe, safety, is an important aspect of when you're going through, when your parents are going through a separation, divorce, if you will, you want to feel safe. And he did that. He made me feel safe. He basically said, you're going to be okay in his own words. Mm. And that's, so, that, yeah. Yeah. That's just, I mean, uh, I tell you that takes it with you forever. I'm sure you still, uh, you look at that in such a, a beautiful way. And, and Johnny Ray, what are some things in, in working with Ryan on this incredible book, which we encourage everybody to get Amazon has it folks and get it at, you know, uh, places where books are sold, but Amazon has, it. you can get it right now. And I know we have a very loyal interactive viewing audience or Jameis Lovety audience watching around the world. They'll be getting the book already. They, they love stuff like this. So order away gang, Johnny Ray, what are some things you learned what are some things you learned about James Cagney, somebody that might have been an iconic figure for you, and that you also learned additionally about Ryan Cassidy as he opened up with this incredible book? Well, uh, first of all, I got to tell you about Ryan's voice. Uh, he had a very pure way of telling a story. Uh, I, I mean, he's he's somebody who I think you know, should tell stories like this um, as children's books, as family books, because he has, the voice is just so pure and he can create the image for you, you know, just on the telephone or in person in less than 60 seconds and engage you into the story. So that sort of heartwarming, pure storytelling quality that Ryan had, um, you see in his family, you know, of course he has that. Um, so in terms of Ryan and learning to know who he was, uh, I could I could learn who he was just listening to him tell this story, the story of James Cagney who babysat him one day. And as far as James Cagney goes, um, I was a fan of the old movies. Um, I'm a big fan of the 40s era for movies, the black and white era. So it was another like fit for me because, uh, you know, I loved all that stuff. I grew up, and of course, I grew up on the Partridge family and all of that. Um, but, you know, I'd stay up. I remember staying up late on Friday and Saturday nights. You know, I was the nerd who read the TV guide cover to cover and stayed up watching the old black and white movies and then would go to school and recite, you know, who was in it and what year it was made and all of that. We talked about this. Did you used to collect the TV guides too, like I did? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but um, so James Cagney for me was, you know, that, that giant uh, movie star of the classic era, the black and white, you know, mm. for me, gangster, you know, he was very right. much of the gangster mindset more than the Yankee doodle yeah. uh, dandy mindset for me. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was one of those Humphrey Bogart and Catherine Hepburn. He was one of those greats. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. It really is, you know, and, and again, you learn so much just in telling the stories. I, I would imagine, too, um, what has the, the response has been spectacular. What has been the feedback from folks, either peers in the industry, uh, the Cagney family, others that are reading the book? What, what are they saying? Well, uh, James Cagney uh, has a grandson by the name of Jonathan Cagney. And uh, he sent me a message. Uh, he had picked up the book and he thanked me 
for making it. And uh, that was one of the greatest honors I could I could receive from a mess from somebody in this family. The 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 response has been overwhelming. Uh, I think it's uh, it's a positive story. It's it's a unique story, and it's uh, a story that I think is universal in in that it shares uh, it it shares love, uh, creativity, um, and the wonderful thing about it is that you don't have to know who James Cagney is to to read it and understand it. You'll certainly know who he is by the end of the book. Um, and that was important to you, right? You wanted to uh, sort of introduce maybe younger generations to this this man. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I going into it that people, that kids weren't going to know who James Cagney was, but it didn't really matter because at the end of the day, it's a, it's a it's a beautiful story about a little boy and an older man that a uh, little boy didn't know. And uh, the template from my standpoint was a book, The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein, which yes. was it in my mind the whole time. And uh, I, not so much that it's the same type of a story, but the simplicity of it. And that's what I wanted to try to capture uh, of this little boy and this tree, you know, that gave to him unconditionally his whole life so you know uh, johnny has his own idea of what his thoughts were but i i really wanted to create uh, a story with images that uh that could be universally identified through on a personal level from from the from you know from the from the reader's perspective uh whether it be an older person or a young kid that's incredible. That's beautifully done. Uh, I know people have probably asked this. Are you, is it also in the offing that there would be something on David and David's life as well, whether it's a biopic or something documentary or because there's been a lot of things out there, but they're not always accurate and they're not always of the best taste and quality. Is there anything that you've thought about in remembering, uh, your brother David? Uh, yeah, but I don't know if it's something I'm willing to talk about right now because I have some ideas that Johnny and I have discussed. That's cool. That, That's right. Loose lips sink ships. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but but you have just excited about, uh, what, 50 million people probably? <laughs> we call that here a uh, JMS exclusive. <laughs> we funny. we have uh we have discussed the possibility of of doing other 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 you know other things so do you miss uh, acting at all uh ryan do you uh i mean you're obviously a brilliant set decorator and dresser do you miss the performance part of it yourself yeah sometimes i do yeah I do sometimes uh i i especially when i'm working with actors that i know that yeah are, actors um i do sometimes miss it yeah and johnny ray what do you have coming up as well and again congratulations on this amazing book and we encourage folks to get it uh what else you're always working on there's something else i think that you have sort of brewing that you might have <laughs> mentioned a little of the last time you were here and just want to let you know before you answer that tracy miller welcome ryan and johnny i have the book and loved it Oh, that's great. That great. Terrific. Yeah, they've been Thank commenting. Thank you, Tracy. Hey, Tracy. Every, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's been commenting throughout. We thank everybody for the comments. Um, what are you working on as well, Johnny? Well, um, a couple things that I'll keep hush hush, but uh, the one I'll tell you that um, that I know it, the information's already out there uh, because he put it out there ahead of me is Henry Diltz. Henry Diltz and I are doing a, a book together of all of his pictures of David. You know, he's an iconic photographer from the Woodstock era who photographed just about everybody who donned the cover of a, an album during that era. And he was very, very close with David. And um, he and I are working on a coffee table book together uh, that, that tells his story through pictures. 
That's incredible. Maureen's watching in Arizona, USA. The book sounds amazing. Nice comments coming in from everybody here. Really, really fantastic. Kind of coming in from all around the world too. Welcome from uh, Merlin. She's up in Canada. Thanks for this great comedy uh, comments, folks. We love this here. It's really terrific. Yeah, very true, Linda. What a talented family, Linda Johnson says. It's definitely in the uh, in the genes. This is really amazing, guys. Um, you know, you had an opportunity to put this together, and you're sharing it with the world. And I do want to. We've got it. We'd be remiss if we did not mention the illustrator as well. Tell us about the brilliant illustrator you brought on board, John. Well, you know, we we will sing this in unison. We have to credit our publisher for finding her. Uh, she is just fantastic. Um, she captured uh, the look and feel. Andrea Carjival uh, is her name. And she just captured the look and feel of all those characters. Little Ryan, um, James Cagney as an old man, and, you know, even Shirley and Jack are in there. Captured perfectly by her. She, she's fantastic. So the idea, if I may interject, uh, yeah. the, uh, our publisher wanted to create uh, image illustration uh, text on the same. So in other words, they wanted the, the reader to be brought into the, the moment of that story visually. And Andrea was able to do that. She was able to create the magic in these illustrations that really were the that I was experiencing that and she did and I would wake up you know when the book was being made I would wake up in the morning and see the new drawing that uh, she had turned in for our approval and she really got it it was incredible there's a, a shot you're showing show us uh, tell us what you're showing right there for the audience that haven't seen it yet Johnny yeah, this is a great little uh, great example of the work. Yeah, this is um, let me get it. it really is. It's a children's book, but yet adults are loving it too. And you know, it's the the images are so <laughs> you know close to the real thing. It's iconic, huh? Yeah, yeah. Check this out. You know, this is this beautiful picture of one of my favorites in the book of this owl in the tree towards the end. Look just her artwork is her artwork is extraordinary and she just did it so with such ease and so yeah. quickly yeah. really just really talented girl no uh, she's terrific uh what, yeah what do you hope uh people are left with with this book i mean just the the title alone is so cool when i first heard it when you mentioned it johnny ray after you were a guest on the show I said, James Cagney was my babysitter. What a fantastic, just that line alone grabs you. You want to it know does. more. You want to know more about it. It does, um, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. What do you, what do you hope the reader, uh, the consumer of it is, uh, what they'll get from it, Ryan? Well, I think, I think they're going to see number one, that James Cagney, who James Cagney was. It, it, from the standpoint of what what how what I left with, and and I think that they're going to also see the simplicity of of uh, who he was and and the love that he gave, um, and you know it's it is a beautiful book and it's simple you can read it in twenty five minutes, uh, and I think you're going to know who James Cagney, you know you you may be a fan of his work. But you'll know who he is uh, by reading this book on more of an, from an, from you know, intimately, and that's uh, there. There are people out there that are fans of all different kinds of people, and they they have a perception of who they are that right. may not really be. This book gives you a taste of who this man was uh, through the lens of a little boy, mm -hmm. and that's uh, it. It, could, it just that's a that's a wonderful that's a wonderful message you know you see another book in the offing did you dip your feet in now where you're like mm, i kind of like this writing and authoring kind of thing yeah, yeah. but again, i don't want to reveal, reveal too much too soon. <laughs> yeah yeah 
I've got some ideas. That's exciting. That's that's really cool. That's so great. Uh, a couple of the uh, folks have been saying that they are already, they've already ordered. I guess there is also the Kindle. Linda Johnson saying just bought the Kindle version of your book. Looking forward to reading it. Oh, uh, thank you, got, you. You got a Kindle version as well, right? Too, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's really exciting when you walk into a Barnes and Noble and you actually see it on the shelf too. It's just yeah. a great feeling. Yes. And they're saying beautiful pictures. Just want to show you, you know, we're very interactive here at the Gym Masters show with our audience and some of the real faithful. We call them loveities because they said the show has a lot of light, love and levity. And I said that during the last crazy couple of years we've all endured and survived. And I said love and levity too fast one time and out came the word levity. So the show has this whole levity vibe. And one of our levities watching there in Kansas, USA says, thank you, Ryan and Johnny, for being here tonight. Loved hearing about your book and hearing about your career and your family. Can't wait to read the book. So uh, they're placing their orders already. And, and again, they got a chance to learn a little bit about you know, you, Johnny Ray, a little bit more about Ryan and your wonderful background and the passions you have for life. And of course, uh, your wonderful family, Merlin in Canada here, one of our regular viewers, just wanted to thank you guys. Of course, Johnny's already, he's already a lovety from before. And now Ryan is a lovety on the Gym Masters show live. So I always say this, gang, and you heard this before, there are Academy Awards as your mom knows, there's Academy Awards and Tonys and Grammys and Peabody's and Emmys and Tellies and all these fabulous things you can get. But Ryan, how does it feel to be a lovety on the Gym Masters show tonight? I've landed. <laughs> you have <laughs> landed. <laughs> Thank you. That is it. That is it. Uh, a lot of the guests say that their feet start tingling. And I think one of the guests said they started uh, levitating as a result. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you guys are the best. Truly a, a wonderful conversation. As I mentioned, nothing is scripted. It's just, you know, the three uh, musketeers here going back and forth. I just want to say thank you. Um, you know, if you do talk to your mother a half hour from now, thank her for all of the wonderful years of, of just love and, and shining as she has the entertain, the entertainment that she has provided. And, um, she's just really, a she's a shining light for many. And, um, if you, Talk to her after the show. Let her know that you're masters and everybody else says that. And of course, you know, your brothers as well. It was really an honor, Ryan. And I hope we chat some more down the line. And I wish you nothing, you and the family, um, continued success, the best of health and happiness. Uh, truly, uh, I really appreciate your authenticity and your openness and your wit and wisdom on this conversation. And as I always say, we're going to keep the porch light on for you. My friend, you are welcome back to stop by the Gym Master Show anytime you'd like. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored to be part of this and be your guest. And it was a, been, it's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you, everybody, for, for, for listening and purchasing the book. And it, it really was made with love. And I mean that. And uh, thank you, Jim. And oh, the pleasure is all mine. And as my Irish Catholic New York father has always said and told me when I was, I think, seven years old, whenever you hear something kind or nice from somebody, ask them to please put it in writing and address it management. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right yeah. on, right uh, on. Yeah, Irish wit and wisdom. Uh, Johnny Ray, as always, you're the best. And truly, oh, thank you so very much uh, for coming on again. And you're, the porch light is always on for you, my friend. And hopefully we're all in the same zip code uh, at some point. And uh, you're a delight to talk with. And I share your passion for you know, entertainment and, and television history, you know, working in TV and radio myself. It's, it's probably one of the things that put me into the industry. And, uh, and I studied architecture and design too, Ryan, before wow. going into this industry. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was very fascinated by, 
you know, the dressing and decorator side of what you do and was looking around at your house, the lighting, the painting, very, very tastefully done. Um, but Johnny Ray, a blast to have you with us as well. Thank you, man. It's just a pleasure to be here. I really appreciate it uh, for all that you do. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very, very welcome. And <laughs> I thought that was just like a, a fade to black there. He's showing you behind the scenes how it works. <laughs> I was levitating. I was off the He was levita levitating. He was right? levitating. That's right. Now, now what are you going to do next, guys? Go make a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Ryan Cassidy, thank you so very much. Johnny Ray Miller, thank you as well. Thank uh, you. Enjoy the rest of your evening and congratulations on the book. We'll tell them again how they can get it and really appreciate your spending all this time with us. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Thanks Great. for having us, Jim. You're very welcome. Take care. Cheers. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Johnny Ray and Ryan, thank you very much again as well. Thanks, Jim. You're welcome. Ryan Cassidy, Johnny Ray Miller. Johnny Ray, this is his return visit to JMS, to the Gym Master Show Live. We really appreciate him. He really is a historian. He's a writer, he's an author, but he loves entertainment and he loves the Partridge family, Cassidy's, the whole thing. And he has ever since he was a kid. And now he's had opportunities to celebrate it and uh, write about it as well. If you want to know more about Johnny Ray, you can go to their, his site as well. And just really fantastic. There's the other book we talked about when we're singing. We had a whole show on that. Uh, so be sure and check that out in the archives. All the episodes of the Gym Masters show series are archived. Hey, gang, just real quick, want to let you know that Tina Cole, iconic actress, singer, and author, joining us tomorrow. You know her, of course, from My Three Sons. She's a fabulous singer as well. She's going to be with us tomorrow. And also we're going to be uh, celebrating the life of this fabulous jazz singer who left us way too soon, Carol Sloan, with filmmaker Michael Lippert joining us as well. That's Both of these episodes are happening tomorrow right here on the Jim Masters Show series. So, wow. Was this fantastic or what, folks? I know a lot of you, this took you down memory lane because you got a chance to hear from Ryan and, of course, talking about his uh, iconic family. We really appreciate both Johnny Ray Miller and Ryan Cassidy for joining us here live. Again, our shows are unscripted. They're conversational. They're warm. They're interactive. We really sincerely appreciate all of your activity, all your comments in our lovely whole chat room. Want to let you know too, if you'd like to interact with us, we do have a Facebook page. It's Gym Masters TV. So you can go to our Facebook page. All of our emphasis now is on our Facebook page, you know, for the social media, as well as Instagram and Twitter. So we streamlined everything and everything is all Gym Masters TV because that's the name of the channel on YouTube, Gym Masters TV. The show is the Gym Masters Show, but the channel on YouTube is Gym Masters TV. The Facebook page is Gym Masters TV. Instagram and Twitter are Gym Masters TV. So like and follow and share and celebrate. Uh, we figured we'd streamline it, streamline it and just make it easy for everybody. So if you want to communicate with us, check us out on the Facebook page, Gym Masters TV, and on Instagram and Twitter, Gym Masters TV as well. Again, this really was fantastic, and we really appreciate Ryan. And also being so open and sharing uh, this wonderful story of James Cagney was my babysitter. Could you imagine James Cagney being your babysitter? There's the book. You can get it at Amazon. And, uh, of course, all the other usual places. We, again, really appreciate Johnny Ray Miller joining us. And what great photos and all kinds of wonderful memorabilia we got a chance to sort of sprinkle in here. Shirley Jones, of course, Ryan Cassidy. I, I absolutely have always loved this beautiful photo of Shirley Jones. Just captures something so wonderfully warm about our brilliant actress, Academy Award winning, and a mom, wife, mom, grandmother. There she is with the Academy Award. And there she is with young Ryan. I really appreciate some of these photos that uh, he personally sent along as well. And of course, his iconic dad, Grammys, Tonys, you name it. Jack Cassidy. 
He's very open about his dad, talking about his dad. And of course, his brothers, of course, Patrick on the left, Ryan, then Sean Cassidy, and of course, David Cassidy. And yeah, just like his dad, an impeccable dresser. Celebrating James Cagney, too, an iconic figure. And as I said at the top of the show, we were in Florida visiting our family and how I uncanny that the movie that was on the television that everybody was watching was one of the James Cagney films. So I really love this shot. A boy and his father. That's Ryan Cassidy with his dad, Jack Cassidy, on set. Yep, there's Jack Cassidy again. If you didn't see any of these earlier. Jack Cassidy, Shirley Jones, of course. This is a cool one, too, that he sent along. This is Shirley Jones with Ryan in their home. There's the pool table. Other great shots, too, on set. There he is with Patrick and Sean, his brothers. It's a great family photo as well, huh, with Shirley Jones and Jack Cassidy. Also love this one, too. We showed some of these earlier, but in case you didn't see them. And there are the brothers there. Ryan and Patrick, Sean and David Cassidy. Showed this earlier at the top of the show. At first, it looks like Sean a little bit, too, or the eyes, but it is, it is Ryan. And there he is when he was on Facts of Life, of course, as well. There's another great shot. We didn't show this earlier on the steps of the house. Charlie Jones, Jack Cassidy. Of course, yes, as um, Ryan had mentioned, Shirley married uh, Marty Ingalls, the comedian. Jack, of course, had passed away uh, when Ryan was around age 10. Wonderful to hear that Shirley Jones is enjoying her life. She's worked so hard. She's has a legacy and body of work that has stood the test of time. And it's absolutely iconic, beautiful voice and beautiful person. And of course, many of us remember her as Mrs. Partridge, but this is such a heartwarming photo, more recent photo of the family. And there's Ryan and Shirley. Wonderful photo of Ryan Cassidy and Shirley Jones there. And I love this one too. A mother and her son, not just Ryan Cassidy and Shirley Jones, but more importantly, a mother and her son. It's beautiful. Here's another great shot. Shirley Jones on the left, of course, and she's in the middle there with the David and Patrick and yeah, everybody there. There's Sean then and now, and nice to get some updates on the brothers too. And a wonderful shot of David Cassidy with Shirley Jones. And there is Megan, the light of his life, Ryan's daughter, Megan. And there she is there as well. Some great studio photos as well and other fantastic things. You may remember this too that he shared with us. Mm -hmm. Adam West, of course, Batman. Mm hmm. And, you know, we didn't talk about this, but I want to make mention of it because it's really important. He's also very involved with the Los Angeles Police Department Museum. And that's something that is and this is just one of the photos of this spectacular museum. Um, he has been very much so a supporter of their fine work, the LAPD. And uh, he's involved with the museum uh, very passionately and enthusiastically and in an intense way. And I think it's, it's spectacular that they have a museum like this celebrating, again, the LAPD and all the beautiful work that they do. So that's something we didn't get a chance to mention, but he's very involved in that and has always had an interest in it as well. And look who we've got here. Now, do you know who that is? <laughs> he sent this along as well. That is the actor John Stamos. Yes, John Stamos has a copy of the book as well. And uh, Ryan sent this along, and there is uh, John with the book. <laughs> Just wanted to slip that in. It's a really cool shot as well. 
this really was fantastic. And we even slipped in uh, my Irish dad with dad and mom as well. <laughs> also from New York. Originally, uh, dad, mom is from New England. Uh, Ryan Cassidy, thank you very much. We really appreciate him being here. And Johnny Ray Miller, brilliant writer, author. James Cagney was my babysitter. Let's take a look at a couple of the comments here. Beautiful pictures. Wonderful pictures. Thank you, Linda. And you got the Kindle version of the book, right? That is fantastic. Wonderful pictures brings back memories. Ah, uh, <laughs> just relaying what it says on the screen here. Really, really nice. You have the book. It is great. Linda Johnson says, thanks, Jim, for all you do. The pleasure is all mine. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Again, we don't rush it through. These are conversations. Tracy Miller, looking forward to another book. We are too. Sherry Larson says, thank you, Jim, for another wonderful show. Really enjoyed this and uh, possible story time book. Mm. Again, gang, if you want to connect with us, we have merged everything to our Facebook page, which is Jim Masters TV. So you can communicate, you can comment, you can interact with one another. That's Jim Masters TV. And also the Twitter and the Instagram, Jim Masters TV. Just made it so much more easier for us to manage because I'm so busy with my professional work that we wanted to streamline everything. So if you want to communicate, uh, you can do that there as well. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Jim Masters TV. Everything is still there and available for you. Good to see you, Sherry. Lindsay Johnson says, yes, a great conversation. Uh, I was late. We'll catch up uh, with the replay. Yes, we archive all of our episodes, gang. So if you want to see this episode again, you can because we archive everything. Jane watching in Sweden. And Jane says, thank you, Ryan and Johnny, for being here tonight. Great show. Thank you, Jim. Heart, heart, heart. My pleasure. Linda Johnson says, this has been very interesting. Thank you very much. Tracy Miller says, thank you for sharing your stories tonight. I've really enjoyed listening. We enjoyed having you here, Tracy. Maureen in Arizona. Lovely Maureen says, Ryan and Johnny, this has been an awesome conversation. Thank you for being Jim's special guest this evening. Keep being awesome. And they'll see these comments later. I'm sure they'll review, you know, watch the show again. And all of their fans will watch the show again. So uh, thanks for all of the comments in our lovely whole chat room. If you ever want to comment when the shows are on live, subscribe to our YouTube channel, which doesn't cost anything. And we have a lovely whole chat room, we call it, that is available when the shows are live. Now, if you ever get a chance to comment and you want to support the show, of course, you can do that as well with Super Chat, Super Emoji, Super Stickers uh, that's in the chat room there. And also, don't forget, if you enjoyed this episode, those of you watching us on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV, if you enjoyed this, give this episode a thumbs up like. Yeah. Give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment for us, too, on our YouTube channel. We're very interactive. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV, as well. So we appreciate that. Just want to let you know, also... So many wonderful guests that have come through the Jim Masters Show Live series. We love them all. And one of them, who's a dear friend, actually, who just had a birthday. So we've got to say happy birthday to Lucy Arnez, who's actually in New York performing. And we'll be seeing her this Saturday uh, in performance. She's been a guest a couple of times now on the Jim Masters Show Live series. And we were chatting. You know, I wished her happy birthday. And uh, it's her birthday this week. She's been a guest on our show a couple of times. She loves it. We're going to have her back again. She was just on recently. If you want to see that episode, it's archived. And we, a couple of months ago, had a three-year anniversary celebration. And a lot of our guests uh, were kind enough to want to send comments via video celebrating what we're doing here. So this is what Lucy Arnaz had to say. Hey, Jim, congratulations. That's quite a milestone. I've always enjoyed talking to you. You do a great show, positive, optimistic, interested. You do your homework. We love being with you, and I hope we get a chance to do it again sometime. With love from Lucy Arnaz and Larry Leckenbill.
And happy birthday to Lucy Arnaz, celebrating her birthday this week. And of course, the iconic, if you didn't see this show, she was on twice, actually, a dear friend, the one and only Melissa Manchester wanted to share these words as well, in case you didn't see these earlier during our anniversary celebration a couple of months ago already. Hi, this is Melissa Manchester. Happy third anniversary, Gym Masters. I'm so happy for your achievements thus far with no end in sight. I was delighted to be invited uh, to be on your show twice. And we had um, a lovely time discussing my career and achievements. And and what struck me was how how delightful the tone was. It was not, um, you were not looking for any gotcha moments. You know, you were, you, Jim, are interested apparently in restoring the art of conversation. And with that, the concept of levity, which I just find charming and encouraging and delightful. So I look forward to chatting with you again, dear Jim. And congratulations again for for making a space where people can share their ideas, where you can ask thoughtful, probing questions to see how we're all doing uh, on our paths, our parallel paths. So wishing you uh, many, many more happy anniversaries. Long may love a tea wave and you too. Be well. Thank you very much from the iconic Melissa Manchester, dear friend of our show. And thanks to all of you. Appreciate you being with us, watching these episodes, sharing in the uh, and reveling in what we're doing here and celebrating what we're doing here. A lot of work behind the scenes, but a real pleasure uh, to have you come into our life and uh, allow us to come into yours, wherever you're watching from around the world. Don't need this anymore. <laughs> Uh, that's just to hear the guys. Uh, but truly, we really sincerely appreciate it. We've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of episodes of this series, gang, and it continues to be a blast. So find us on social media at Gym Masters TV on our Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter. And also, uh, we will see you back here. Now, for those of you watching again, we've got two shows tomorrow, one celebrating uh, the late and legendary jazz singer Carol Sloan and a new film that's coming out. Um, and we're looking forward to that. That's going to be tomorrow afternoon. And then tomorrow night, the iconic actress and singer, Tina Cole, who was Katie Douglas on My Three Sons. She's stopping by the Gym Masters show tomorrow evening for those who are following us live. All right, gang, that wraps this up. Thanks for sticking with us. We appreciate it. I think maybe I'm going to go make a sandwich. <laughs> Linda says, love Lucy and Melissa, so do we. And love to all, to you as well, Linda. You guys are fantastic. All right, this is your host, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time till next time. Like, comment, subscribe, share, celebrate what we're doing. Tell your friends, don't keep it a secret. And um, thanks for stopping by. Uh, we don't say goodbye. We say ciao, cheers, uh, see you later, slantra, avida zain, hasta la vista. What else are we saying? Boy loops, sayonara, cheerio. You know the drill. And we'll see you on the next episode. For all of us here, thanks for being with us. We love you all. It's always a pleasure when you're here and stopping by and being interactive with us here and celebrating what we're doing on the Gym Masters Show Live Series. We'll see you on the next one. Take care and be well, gang. And cheers. <laughs>